The harvest tractors are out of the barn. The irrigation water is draining from the fields. The rice plants are turning gold. The crawdads are looking for refuge. The school bus is, hey, where's the school bus? We're going to get into all that in this epic tractor video coming up. Ah, uh, yes, the 2019 California rice harvest is rapidly approaching. This is going to be an epic tractor video indeed. Shortly, I'll give you a quick harvest equipment and tractor tour, but unfortunately, these tractors aren't running. We're still a week or two out from harvest. So I don't have much tractor work action to show you yet. Although the California Rice Commission has reported that harvest combines are cutting in some parts of the North State. Link to these videos in the description. Have a great 2019 rice harvest, fellas. Again, I don't have much tractor work footage for you. Even during the crop year, we don't run too many tractors, really just to mow the roads like you see here. Our old K7240 with a chopper mower keeps our weedy dirt roads manicured beautifully. We'll mow once a month just to keep the persistent weeds down. And by the way, just now we replaced the most worn down blades to keep things sharp. We'll put the mower to good use after we harvest the rice to chop up the remaining rice straw. I think I've got an old clip of that. This is one step in helping the straw decompose over this coming winter. Besides mowing roads during the growing season, we did have Backhoe Joe out to help us move water as you saw in my controversial episode titled How to Grow Rice in the Great California Desert. Link is in the description. Later in the crop year a month ago, Pops did have to fire up his old case backhoe and fill in a washed out beaver tunnel near one of our drain risers. That was a lot of excitement. Pops actually dug out and plugged off the field's drain and diverted water into another field across the road because the beaver just kept coming back and digging out his tunnel and diverting the water did help. Oh yeah, remember way back to this winter's episode titled No Shovel Work in this video, I promise? Link in the description. I pointed out that one of our deep well pumps was littered with squirrel holes. Squirrel hole, squirrel hole, squirrel hole, squirrel hole, squirrel hole, squirrel hole, squirrel hole under the concrete slab. Well, about a week ago, Joe came back and helped us fill those in. Pretty sweet. But other than that tractor work, the crop year is pretty quiet. Our pest management applications and additional fertilizer are all applied by air. So back to our harvest equipment and tractors. Let's see what we're working with this year. Oh uh, yeah, we've got our new to us this year yellow bank out that required a lot of mechanical work. I'll get back to that a bit later. We picked it up this spring during groundwork before our first rice field was even planted. What a difference from the brown soil to the golden rice plants. Now, of course, we've got our old red bank out looking good. Here's our Case 340 Magnum with a three-point plow chisel attached. That's ready to incorporate the cut chopped up straw into the soil for decomposition. Next, we have our old yellow bank out. We've got her ready for another harvest. Now, our Case 260 Magnum is hooked up to a Case 770 tillage disc, which will also be used to incorporate cut rice straw into the soil for decomposition. Our other Case 260 Magnum is hooked up to a grain cart to help with extra rice storage between fields. And finally, in this battalion, we have another new to us yellow bank out. Pops bought this turnkey tractor at auction during the early part of the growing season. That's right, Pops bought two bank outs this spring and kept us busy with the prep. Anyway, where is the real star of this tractor tour, huh? Hmm? I know, you're all wondering, where's the John Deere 7520? Well, it's right where we last left it, next to the deep well pump. We never used it. We're done with water and didn't need to run the deep well this year. We even had the drive line from the gearhead disconnected. But I'm kidding. The real stars of this tractor tour are harvest combines. 
Here's the John Deere CTS 9660. Remember last harvest? Bam! In my death by harvest episode, link in the description, the left rotor drum blew out. It's replaced and the machine is in tip top condition. Although with our cutting power this year, we're not planning on using it. It's really just a spare. We were actually on the fence about selling it, but with how many tractor breakdowns we had last harvest, you understand. Speaking of last year, the John Deere CTS-2 that had its windshield shattered, bam. Well, we fixed that this year. That was a lot of fun cleaning shards of broken glass and lifting the heavy replacement windshield. It was so much fun actually, I think it deserves a little musical montage. Yeah, we fixed it all up and sold it. The John Deere CTS-2 is gone. We still have the Kloss Lexion 585R, however. Right now, it's got a 21-foot honeybee header hooked up to it. But last year, we also bought a 25-foot honeybee header that will eventually hook up to it for this harvest. We'll see if we can get more efficiency out of it. I hope so. And the star of this year's harvest? You know it, our new Kloss Lexion 750 with a 25-foot honeybee header. We've done a lot of work on it. It's in tip top shape and I'm looking forward to operating it come this harvest. Aside from the bank outs, tractors and harvest combines, we have our trucks and trailers hooked up and in position. Our entire harvest fleet is ready and waiting for the crop to mature and the fields to dry out. We're ready for the 2019 California rice harvest. My buddy Tom Knowles is ready too. Can you give me a thumbs up? He's got his Case 9120 Harvest Combine and Case 9240 Harvest Combine ready to cut some rice. Oh, and look out, he's also got his Case 340 Magnum hooked up to a grain cart, ready to haul that freshly cut rice. Looking good, Tom. Send me a harvest update when you get started, buddy. And what about Uncle Jimmy and the boys? They're hauling out the last bit of rice from their on-site storage bins, making way for this year's crop. I stepped into one of their empty bins and got a great panning shot of what one looks like empty. Pretty sweet. Now, perhaps the moment you've all been waiting for. You all remember the scene of the school bus pulling up to our rice fields. I've teased this long enough. Remember the new to us yellow bank out I mentioned that required a lot of mechanical work? Well, it originally came with a V8 industrial Ford gas motor. Now gas motors can be problematic because they run hot and it's easier to catch dried out rice straw on fire. Also, all of our equipment runs on diesel, so refueling would be a bit of a logistical pain since all our fuel wagons are filled with diesel. So Pops would prefer to change out the entire engine for a diesel, for more stability and more torque. Problem is, Pops didn't have a spare diesel motor. So around coffee shop gossip, he found out a gentleman who had a school bus for sale. A school bus with a Cat 3208 turbo diesel motor. So we checked it out, went over the specs and considered the swap, converting a school bus engine over to our new bank out. The Cat 3208 turbo motor boasts around 350 horsepower and its size works well within the limited space of the bank out's chassis. Two of our other bank outs have the same motor in them. It was a no brainer. Pops bought the school bus. Well, he bought the engine in the school bus, but we had to tear it out. And once the bus arrived at the yard, tear it out we did. Well, I say tear, but we were gentle. As we're ready to pull out both the unwanted gas motor from the bank out and our desired diesel motor from the bus, Ace Mechanic Jerry arrives on the scene to help with the heavy lifting 
and expert mechanical engineering. Jerry's got a lot of work cut out for him, but don't worry, I'm here to hand him a wrench and do some filming, mostly filming. Both motors are out, safe and sound. Jerry measures the frame as he'll need to add some additional motor mounts. He'll cut some new shock absorbers for those mounts. Look, the new motor is installed and the radiator is on. We take the radiator into the local radiator repair shop because we need a new port for the coolant return. That was fun to watch. Check it out, the first time the bank out's fuel tank is going to get a taste of diesel, the red flavor. Jerry's working on the fuel return. Now, it's time to start her up, and I get the honors. Sounds good, but we've got more work to do. Jerry makes a mount for a gearbox that will run off the PTO, or power takeoff. That runs off the Allison automatic transmission, which also came off the school bus. We had to buy the PTO, by the way. Anyway, the gearbox, like I said, runs off the PTO and turns a sprocket, that turns a chain, that turns an auger system in the grain tank of the bank out. That's all operated by an electrical switch in the cab. And that's how we get the rice out of the grain tank and into our trailers. Jerry welds in the mount for the gearbox and sparks fly. The motor, transmission, driveline, and radiator are all in. Jerry reworks the wiring, cuts a few gussets for extra support, and makes new mounts to keep things organized. The final elements we need on this bad boy is a new exhaust system and to mount the new clean air breather. But with Jerry here, it's poetry in motion. And she's done. A beefed up bank out, ready for its first crop year with us. Ready for the 2019 California rice harvest, my friends. And I hope you're ready too. I know that was a lot of talking, and y'all like hearing the engines purr. So I'll fire up the Lexion 750 for you as I sign off. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Take care, and let's fire this up just so you can hear it. Hey, hope you like the sound of that. Go shut it off. Nothing to cut right now.